G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to put one of these onto one of these. Five, four, three, two, one. Old school only is go. <laughs> Yep, we've got my BF2 XL Falcon Ute, NAU Barra, and I have all of this to throw on this. There's a lot of people that diss it. I don't really care what people think. I know people are getting good, reliable results when it's done properly, and a lot of it's in the tune. So let's get into it. I've already taken my, uh, my header off, heat shields off, um, intake pipe is off there, bumper's off, which all needs to come off. Um, got to make room for intercooler, piping and all that sort of stuff. Now I'm going for a full factory setup. I don't have anything modified. I do have some bigger um, injectors just in case we need them. I know they do run the stock injectors, BA, uh, sorry, the NA, NA and turbo injectors are the same, but we've got some bigger ones just in case and 42 pounds if we need them. Um, Going to run a standard ECU and a external pressure regulator. I'm not going for maximum performance because the I've got stock internal, stock gearbox. It's a four-speed stock diff. So later on, yeah, maybe down the track we might upgrade this. Bigger rods, bigger valve springs, forged pistons, big exhaust, big turbo. You know, six, seven hundred horsepower. But that's not today. We are just going for reliability around three forty horsepower to. 50 to 60 kilowatts maybe we'll see what happens exhaust manifold is on and on for good um, one thing i'm yet to confirm and we'll find out in a second is where the water feed comes from for the turbo one thing i want to do before we go any further is just confirm that the crossover um, pipes all line up with the na setup mainly that guy yep that's gonna work um, one thing i was thinking of doing and it's cutting up the original heat shield off the header um, and making it work around this area. I do have a cover for the turbo, but I don't have the factory replacement for that guy. So we'll work something out there just to make sure we don't have too much heat going into these pipes. And use what do I have to move from inside of here to get my intercooler in. I'm gonna reckon that horn's gotta to have to go. Um, but I don't know. The genuine Garrett one, which is really cool. We'll just stick with this. For the time being anyway and i think i found how it goes in um there's already holes for it so where are they there and they're behind the bumper rail this uh this is a power steering cooler believe it or not cooler pipe it is in the way of the intercooler intercooler is mounted um i was actually able to mount the horn back in there once it was all in uh in its factory position which is fantastic the only thing I haven't worked out yet is this stupid cooler. It's definitely not rocket science, and uh, yeah, I'll leave you with that one. But is it even necessary if it's only for the power steering? It's not as if it's going to do a lot. I'm sure there is a solution. Have... Alrighty, a little bit of mucking around, only because I didn't realise that I'd been shortchanged a lower intercooler pipe. So I'm going to have to source one of those. Um, so let's go up top and um, do what we've got to do up here. I think it's time to throw Mr. Turbo on. Once he's installed, then we've got to go down underneath and modify the sump. So the NAEs have the same sump as the Turbo, except where the oil um, return line goes in, it's not drilled or tapped, so that's one of the jobs we've got to do. So in my hunt for parts, which I will say has been quite enjoyable, this whole process has been a lot of fun. Um, half the fun is in building this stuff and making it work, and that's, uh, I'm really enjoying this. Anyway, I was able to find a genuine Garrett. It's a uh, GT3582R, um, which is a ball bearing turbo. Um, the only issue with this turbo, I'm gonna take this apart is the core is cactus but 
came with a brand new genuine Garrett core. I've got the new core for it, so everything is genuine Garrett. Um, this is really what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go putting Chinese in there. Um, it's just my preference. So I'm going to throw this together um, with the new core and we'll chuck it on the car. Look at that. Beautiful. Alrighty, we've got the turbo mounted. Um, I've also fitted my oil line, which is the pressure line, and worked out the cooling line. So I'm just going to run them through here, through the turbo. One's been cut up to there, so that'll feed my the cooler for the um, the turbo oil feed. What I'm going to do now is get under this side, uh, remove the oil pressure switch or whatever it is down there, the oil temperature switch, whatever we take out, fit in the feed line, which is going to come down underneath um, and get that side all finished. And then we'll get back under there where I showed you last time and we'll uh, try and fit the uh, oil return. Righto. Very, very difficult to see and I'm going to film myself doing it. But I've removed the oil filter. And let's see if I can get this up there. Up here, I think that's it, is the, from what I believe, it's an oil temperature sensor. I don't really care what it is. It's the oil line that we need to tap into to get our pressure to our oil feed for our turbo. Let me show you what you need. So the block has a 3.8 thread in it. So is the, uh, the switch in there. So you need a double-ended male 3.8 adapter, a 3.8 female T, and a dash 4 3.8 um, NTP fitting. There's the part number that I got there, so you need one of those. So that'll, uh, that'll feed my oil line that's coming over the top. That'll go into the block, and then the original switch will go back into there. There's a better view of it from the top. I don't know if you can see it. Let me get this down. Focus. That's in there, right in the middle. Where's my finger? That guy. We gotta get him out. Put that T piece in there. Alrighty, ready to go back in. If you're not sure, it's the grey one. And when you take it out, it's gonna have oil behind it. So it's right above the oil filter. Chuck it back in, put the oil line on and that side of it's finished. Here you go, oil line in is done. One thing you must do, and I saw this on another guy's video, thank you very much. Um, this is your main positive battery line to your starter motor. It runs right next to the um, turbo. So you need to unpop those clips there and pop it down, reroute it down underneath where the factory turbo ones go. There are holes for the little black clips to pop in. So just get it away from the, the main body here because it'll just melt. Oil returns done. That wasn't hard. I wasn't sure if my drill would fit between the chassis rail and the sump, but it did. Um, so that was easy to do. So all my oil and cooler lines are done. On the top, I've got to remove the throttle body so I can replace the map sensor with the one for the turbo, which is two bar, I think they call it. Um, I've got a four bar fuel pressure regulator to put in it to replace the, um, the NA one. Well, it's been a couple of days since I played on the ute. Um, I had to chase down some parts. So today I managed to find myself a fairly decent X-Force system. Uh, tailpipe's all stainless. Um, yeah, it's in good condition. Catalytic converter's in good condition. And I also managed to get my um, lower intercooler pipe set up. So I've got everything I need now. Um, I'm gonna give this stuff a clean up and we'll start throwing it together. And hopefully by this afternoon, um, we'll have it fired up. Alrighty, wastegate's on. Um, Dump pipes on, I have 
vacuum hose just for some wastegate pressure. Just draining the oil out, oil and filter, and then we're gonna have a go at starting it up, get some oil pressure, make sure we get oil pressure to the turbo. And you can't do a conversion or anything without running it without the exhaust on. You have to hear what it sounds like, so that's what we're gonna do in a sec. As far as the cooler goes, it's over there for the power steering. Um, I've just bypassed it for now, and I'll worry about a cooler later. It's not a priority, nor do I think it's important. I could be wrong, but. So, oil's changed, everything's ready to go. I'm just going to replace the fuel pressure regulator with the one for the turbo, which is a four bar, and then um, we'll fire it up. That's done. It's just as simple as pulling out. Is it pulling out that circle clip? It pops out. Just replace it. Done. All right. I'm just going to start it, and um, without any revving or anything, I'm just going to check we're getting oil to our oil feed. So just kick it, mate. <laughs> flow of oil so that's good that's connected back up just fire it up again mate Just chuck the intake on. Um, let's see if we can make some boost. Boost control showed up. Boost pressure gauges showed up. So I'm going to chuck them on. And I've organised a tuner who's local. So I'll also stick my uh, map sensor in there as well. We're 100% positive that this is completely disconnected I've cut it and tucked that away down in there make no mistake she's not gonna get any vacuum and on this side where it pumps into here I have basically let me just undo it so you can see where I cut it I've got my lighter 
gave it a twist and sealed it off so there's no vacuum leak anymore coming out of that and that's that and as far as my boost gauge goes i've tapped into that same line that runs down to that little solenoid there that we we're not really using um, put my t-piece in here and then i've got my hose that will go to my boost gauge in the car access into the cab um, that's not going to crush this hose because if this hose is kinked or crushed we're not going to get accurate reading on our gauge um, there is a grommet here i'm going to go on the inside of the car and see where that goes to i might be able to tap into that so yeah i found that hole that was nice and easy to get to and i'm going to assume that that's for a clutch pedal setup for a manual so if you've got a manual and you're doing this you might have to find somewhere else but automatic i'm just going to drill a hole in this and um, run the hose through there perfect nice and easy a lot of these modern cars are really hard to get access into the cabin because of all the insulation and stuff um, but yeah another easy little part on the forward good stuff there you go nicely located through the firewall in an existing grommet and into the cab and I've mounted my boost control valve as per instructions so as far as my boost gauge goes um, a lot of people mount them up here you get like a dual pod set up um, some guys mount them on their a pillar I don't know whether that's legal or not um, but I don't want to run extra gauges I mean they look great but I don't need to run extra gauges I just want my boost gauge so all I've done I had a spare gauge bracket kicking around in my shed it's just like a universal one and it's not even screwed in it just sits between the dash cluster and the dash panel and she just sits there just fine so that'll do slide over as much as I can without hitting my um, hazard light switch and in the driving position I can see all my gauges over there so yeah that's got to work out just fine and I've not modified anything and I'm just going to run my wire underneath and uh, we need to hook up the um, the actuator for the boost gauge it's electronic digital one so the vacuum one goes into that so i'll screw that up underneath the dash all right so i guess the next thing that we can do is um take it for a bit of a spin and see what happens that tapping out at about six pound which is perfect especially right now without the tune so I'm gonna go and put it away before I get too excited and um, I've got a couple of things I want to do to it before I get it tuned I want to service the gearbox give that every chance and my exhaust is touching as well so I need to get it up on a hoist sort that out I'll do that when I do the transmission um, I need to do the plugs I need to do the map sensor and I'm waiting for a boot for the intake um, part of the intake so I can fit that properly so it's connected to my airbox so yeah a couple of little things to do but she's driving going you can hear that exhaust bumping away but I'm pretty stoked man it sounds good inside it sounds unreal let's give it one more little squirt on here before I park it up <laughs> yes awesome I'm stoked Alrighty, so I'm booked in for a tune next Wednesday. So a few things I've got to do, change the plugs, gap them up for the turbo. I still haven't got around to changing that map sensor. I'm gonna do that now after I've done the plugs. I wanna change the fuel filter, um, service the transmission. The stuff underneath I'm not doing today because I've booked in at my mate's workshop on Saturday to do the transmission and do everything underneath. I've got to 
sort out my exhaust, the bang in the exhaust, which is just the part that's hitting, and I've just got to bend that out the way. So I'll do that on Saturday. But today, plugs, map sensor, we'll put this back together. Um, I'm still waiting for a coupling for this. I ordered one and they sent me the wrong one, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just need a bit of silicon that's three inch by two inch, so I can put that on. Um, but yeah, anyway. So, Iridium plugs, they last for about 150,000 Ks. I don't know how many Ks this one's done. I've got new ones anyway, and for the turbo, we need to gap them at 0.8. So I've got my trusty old feeler gauges that I've had since I was, what, 16. And that was a very, 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 very long time ago. And they've had a flogging. So, but they're trusty, they work fine. So I'm gonna gap these plugs up, chuck them in, put the cover back on, that's done. All right, plugs are done. Throttle body's off. I don't know if you can see in there. Let's see if we can get it to have a look. You'll see the butterflies in there. They're locked open. So that's how we want them to stay without any vacuum. So now the map sensor is behind the fuel rail there. That's it there. And I'll pull that one out and replace it with the one for the turbo, which is a two bar. I think these are one bar or just over. Alrighty, one thing you need to know about the original NA map sensor on this side. And the turbo map sensor has a different plug. So you can't just plug it in. So what I did, I bought myself an adapter kit. So it's just an extra cable that allows me to adapt the turbo map sensor onto the NA motor. Righto, that's all back together. The next job I want to do while I'm up here is put some heat shields on. It does it get hot under here? My oath it does. Remember this um, hose that we put in here the other day? I stopped reading boost. I was getting negative nine. It's just, it got hot in here and obviously with the vacuum, it sucked it shut and that's it, it stayed shut. It gets hot under here, man. So I'm gonna replace that with some better vacuum hose. That's no big dramas. I just gotta go up the rep car and buy some. Um, so one thing I did buy as I was collecting everything was a turbo cover. This is made out of some vol magic volcanic substance. Who knows? Anyway, that's going on there. And I will modify that heat shield that I was talking about at the start of the video and stick that back on here. So we'll do that now. Well, we're getting a bit low in light, but I've got my heat shield, my heat cover on the turbo and my modified heat shield. You can see where I've cut it away on my um, manifold. All right, let me tell you where I'm at. I've got my coupler. I've got my vacuum hose. That's all well and good. Went to start it after I put the um, two bar map sensor in it yesterday and it won't start. Um, it just doesn't like it. So I thought I'd try and put my, just plug in my map sensor, my original one on the side and I actually got it to run. It idles like it's got a massive cam and it's just chug a lug and black smoke and it'll rev, but it just blows heaps of black smoke. So just stuff that you don't hear about or people won't tell you when you're doing one of these conversions. I want to make sure that you guys know exactly what works and what doesn't. Um, so what I'm in the process of doing now is putting the NA map sensor back in it so I can at least drive it. So tomorrow I've got to take it to my mate's workshop. So we can service the transmission and just go underneath and sort stuff out. And then on Wednesday, I've got to drive it down to um, about 30 k's to the tuner. And without the map sensor, the correct map sensor, I'm not gonna be able to drive it anywhere. So I'm gonna have to change the map sensor when I arrive at the tuner or if he's willing to do it, but I'm happy to do it. I'll take my tools, do a quick swap. Then you can put a tune in it hopefully and it'll work. Um, but like I said, this particular problem did not know about. And since I did a bit of searching on the internet, nothing specifically on this conversion, but looking at upgraded map sensors for turbos, everyone says that it just won't work until you put the tune in it. So there we are. Righto, so it's getting late, but I've got it all back together with the standard map sensor. Took it for a spin and the thing absolutely hammers. It's really impressive without a tune. 
Um, it's kind of hitting up around the 6 to 7 PSI on the boost gauge. Um, but I think it's safe to drive if I take my time. So tomorrow morning off to my mate's workshop. We'll service that transmission, fix the exhaust, change the fuel filter. And um, that's it till the tune on Wednesday. Here we are underneath. Bit of a ding, ding in the sump. We'll straighten it out when you take it off. And my exhaust is hitting on the floor here. So we're just going to bend that out of the way. That noise is the fan because it's like 46 degrees today or something. I'll tell you what, that transmission's hot. One thing I haven't mentioned, I don't think, is a transmission cooler, which I was supposed to get yesterday, didn't arrive. I've not had the best luck with my parts, but that's an original factory transmission cooler. Absolutely good for nothing. So it's cooled by the um, engine coolant. And if your engine's hot, this is gonna be hot. Your transmission's gonna be hot. So basically, we're running a independent air-cooled transmission cooler at the front. Um, and I have got a kit ordered, but it just didn't arrive. So that'll probably have to happen another day, unfortunately. But with these transmissions, apparently the best thing for these is to keep them cool and you'll get a better life out of them. So that's one thing you need to consider. So here we are, hands off, a little bit of metal here. Magnet's got a bit of stuff on it, which is pretty normal. Um, It's like can of a gold. Anyway, you give your thing its best chance. Now that big ding is even going up into the filter. So whatever hit it, hit it hard, but we're replacing all that. We are done. We are good to go for the tune on Wednesday. One thing I will point out is that uh, engine management light's gone and I've been driving the car around now for about half an hour and it's not come back on which is quite surprising. Um, I'm not saying that this tune is good or that everything's right, it's just interesting that that light's gone out. So anyway, I've got to try and get rid of a quarter of a tank of E10 so I can put some decent fuel in it for Wednesday as well. So I'll use this car this weekend and just take it easy. But it's running good, it's, um, it feels really good. It's maxing out at six pound. It'll sometimes spike to seven um, on the gauge, but that's safe levels. It's running rich, which is also safer than lean. My liters per 100 kilometers is really high. It's about 18. And that probably has something to do with that fuel pressure regulator pumping extra fuel in without the tune. But it's here and um, we'll get it on. So while we're on transmissions, I was chatting to my mate this morning who knows a fair bit about these. And he told me that the BTR transmission, which is a four-speed box in these guys, um, I knew they were computer controlled, but they run a, they're very soft in the gear change. And that's the thing I've noticed since putting the turbo on, it's really soft in the gear change. And a soft gear change means slippage. And the more horsepower you run through slippage, the more um, wear and tear, and you're gonna wear the box out really quick. But he told me that the computer can be programmed um, to run 100% line pressure um, at whatever range you want. So um, I'm gonna to speak to my tuner on Wednesday. He has the correct program that can do that apparently and make sure that we're getting 100%. And that way when it changes gears, it's, it locks into gear straight away. There's no slippage, less chance of wear. So I pulled the front bumper off, had a look. There's not a lot of places to put this um, transmission cooler. A lot of people put it on that side, but then you've got to run lines all the way around to the transmission outlets on that side. Um, and it needs to have fresh, cool air getting to it. And I found the perfect spot that I think is going to be unreal. A couple of little bit of tweaking, but right behind the grill. Easy peasy. All I had to do was with my wizard, just take a little bit of thickness out of the back of that. And um, trying to do this one handed. There we go. Beautiful. All I'm gonna do is put a bit of rubber, old rubber tube on the top and bottom, and that ain't going anywhere. Yeah, don't chuck out your old car tubes. Keep at least one of them, because you can use them for all sorts of stuff. I've always got one handy. And for the record, you'll need four meters of hose, not the 
meter or less that they give you in this kit. Four meters. So with a little bit of heat, you can pull these transmission connectors off and um, stick them on your hose. You'll probably need at least seven sixteenth, um, half inch if you can get it, but you start to get too big on the other end. So a bit of a squeeze. I'm actually using three eight and I'm getting it on there, but it's a bit of work. There's only one more thing I want to do. I'm not doing it today though. I'll wait till I get back on my mate's hoist is pull this um, cooler off, disconnect the water and then loop that around because these are known for going on the inside and you end up getting water in your transmission. Now I'm not connected. I'm going to get water escaping from the engine and good chance of overheating if it ever leaks. So that's something I'm going to do later. So that's it. That um, cooler, I you can see it. It sits in there nice. I've just been for a test drive. It's not even anywhere near hot compared to what it used to be like. And um, that's pretty much it. The next time I see you will be at the tuner. I can't wait. Well, it's tune day. Let's go get this done. All right, I wish I could have filmed that and I couldn't really be there myself, but um, I just picked the car up from the tuner and um, I'm really really happy he is really happy with the tune he's tuned it according to the way the car is with stock everything else um, he's photocopied the dyno sheet for me um, he actually got up to 270 kilowatts um, but in reality you can actually see that line there it's quite faint but it shoots right up here and then that's the I think this is the one that we're running with um, here so that's the gearbox isn't happy which we thought he's tuned it as best as he could um, but that's when it hits full pressure 100 percent pressure and it just really starts to shoot up so there's a bit of slippage going on here in the mid-range but you can't really feel it when you're driving um, so yeah i'm pretty happy with that so around 250 kilowatts um, which is a nice safe nice safe tune he's got it running a little bit of rich to help keep it cool um, you've got to remember we're running standard non-turbo pistons and stuff like that so standard gearbox standard diff i'm gonna to have to do something with this gearbox on but i have taken it for a spin and um the thing is awesome it just pulls really hard compared to what it was like it's no 10 second drag car but it goes really good so let's uh let's just uh, go for a drive and see what happens so he's basically tuned it so i can drive it as normal he's happy for me to tow with it he said it's a really good tune for a tow um, he said it's got a lot of mid-range in there um, and really like he said when you're pulling 6,000 rpm in your daily driver so um, the tune is uh, it's a good tune for yeah he's really happy he was stoked and he just got tunes a lot of high performance stuff this is um, this is the bottom end of the stuff that he tunes so it's set up he told me it's set up around sort of seven and a half psi boost um, He's pretty happy with that. He said it should run fine on that. He um, also really liked the way I'd set the car up. So, I mean, it's standard, so he, there's not much not to like, I guess. Um, but he said everything works. Exhaust is good. Um, everything worked good. So. So there you go, to the tune of Rosella's up in the tree over behind me. Um, let's summarize what we did and what we got to, I guess. I'm no bird expert, they're probably parrots or galahs, I don't know. They're multicolored looking things that make a lot of noise in one of the trees. Anyway, back to the car. Standard BF2 NA Barra powered Ute XL Ute fog stock model four speed BTR 250 kilowatts or 340 horsepower with a complete factory BABF turbo intake setup factory um, Garrett GT3582R with a new core 
um, GFB, you can see it down there, turbo pressure regulator, turbo four pound fuel regulator, two bar map sensor. Um, I can confirm that we ran the standard, check out my Zupa Duper, I'm celebrating, um, standard uh, injectors, we didn't need to change those, and standard fuel pump, we didn't need to change that. Um, as I had researched, so that's really cool. Factory intercooler um, and an external in there under the grill. Might even see it better here. Can we see it? Just yet. Oil cooler for the transmission, which makes a massive difference. And that's pretty much it. It works, it works good. Don't be scared to do it, just make sure your tuner knows what they're doing. Um, this guy did and he's done a great job and hopefully we will be running um, this kind of boost for a long time and um, in the meantime I'm going to build myself a completely independent uh, engine running gear and everything for this thing so I can get some decent horsepower. I want to build a motor that's capable of a thousand and then obviously it's going to be limited to my budget as far as transmission, diff, ECU and all that sort of stuff. So. It's that part of it that gets expensive. The engine itself isn't an expensive thing to do to get that sort of horsepower. But I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope um, you're inspired and yeah, don't be scared to do it. It's all about your tuner, I think. If your tuner knows what they're doing, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way, if you do it safely. Um, so yeah, I hope you liked it. So this is from me, I'm pretty stoked. I'm gonna go and grab another Zupa Duper and um, go for another drive. So anyway, stay tuned, be good to your mates. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.